This lecture covers the meaning of demand, the determinants of demand and the law of demand. Before moving on to the meaning of demand, we will understand the concept of utility. What is utility? Utility is a want satisfying power of a commodity. Whenever you consume a commodity, you derive a certain amount of satisfaction from the consumption of the commodity and that is called as utility. So the satisfaction derived is the utility that you get from the commodity. Now utility is subjective in nature. Why is it subjective in nature? Let us take two examples. First we will take the example of two people where one person likes chocolate and the other does not like chocolate. So the person who likes chocolate has been offered chocolate so the utility that is the satisfaction that he'll derive from consuming chocolate will be high and the person who does not like the ch chocolate will derive less satisfaction from having that chocolate or less utility. Now let us take the example of the same commodity, say Cadbury Dairy Milk Silk and then you compare it to two situations where a person likes chocolate but this is the first chocolate that, this is, that is offered to him so the utility that he derived from the first bite of the chocolate will be very high. Now suppose the person, this person who likes the chocolate has been offered one chocolate after he has consumed four or five silks and he does not want to consume it now. So the utility that he will derive from that consumption will be low. Right? Now, whenever the utility from the commodity that you derive, that is the satisfaction that you derive from the commodity is high, you will have the desire to have that commodity because you are deriving satisfaction from consuming the commodity. One thing to keep in mind is that the demand for, for a commodity is not equal to the desire of the commodity. Just because you want or you desire the commodity, it does not turn into a demand. In order to convert your desire into demand, Certain conditions need to be fulfilled. The first is the availability of resources that you should have the purchasing power to buy the commodity. That is, you should have the money to buy the commodity that you desire. The second is the ready to spend the resources that you should be ready to spend the money income to obtain the commodity that you are wanting. Third is the availability of the commodity. That is, the commodity that you want to buy is available in the market. Now I have listed important characteristics of the definitions of demand in this economic definition of demand says that it is the total quantity of commodity that the buyer is willing to buy and is able to purchase at a given price and during a particular time period. Now these are the important characteristics of the definition of demand. That is the total quantity of commodity, that is the total amount of good that you want to buy. Willingness to buy, that is the consumer has the desire to buy the commodity. Someone is not forcing the consumer to buy the commodity. And the consumer has the ability to purchase the commodity, that is he has the money to buy the commodity and he is ready to spend the money to buy the commodity at a given price that is that the price which is quoted in the market the price for the commodity is given and you are willing to willing to buy that commodity at a given price and during a particular time period that is within a week or within a, a month or a year okay now let us move on to the determinants of demand now, demand function expresses a functional relationship between the demand and its determinants. That is, it tells you how demand is dependent on the determinants of demand. Now, 
the demand function here says the demand for a commodity n is dependent on the price of commodity n the price of related goods income of the consumer tastes and the preferences of the consumer now there are two kinds of related goods in the literature that is substitute goods and the complement goods now what are substitute goods as the name suggests when two goods can be used in place of each other they are called substitutes and uh, an example of this can be coke and pepsi suppose a person is indifferent between consuming coke and pepsi that is the consumer derives the same satisfaction from consuming coke or pepsi then with the increase in the demand of coke where the price of pepsi is kept constant the demand for pepsi is going to increase because now pepsi has become cheaper similarly in the case of complements these goods are goods that complete each other they are complementing each other here the utility of one good becomes zero in the absence of the other good for example let us take an example of a ball pen and a refill a ball pen body without a refill is of no use and a refill without a ball pen is also kind of no use so with the increase in the price of refill the demand for the ball pen will fall so the utility of ball pen becomes zero in the absence of refill and the uh, utility of refill in absence of ball pen becomes zero now let us move on to the other factor of the determinant of demand that is the taste and the preferences of the consumer if the consumer has developed a positive taste for let's say tea then the demand for tea will increase and suppose if the person has developed a negative taste or a negative preference for coffee then the demand for coffee will decrease now let us move on to the income of the consumer which is also a determinant of demand now there are three kinds of goods that can be studied here i'll not go much into detail but in order to tell you the relationship between income and the demand i'll segregate the types of goods and let you know how different types of goods are related to the income of the consumer normal goods these are goods where with the increase in the price the demand of the good also increases example milk if the income of the consumer increases then the demand for milk will increase that is if he used to consume less of milk now he will consume more of it now in the case of the inferior good with the increase in the income the demand for the good decreases this inferiority is related to the affordability of the good but not with the quality of the good okay so for example there are two commodities in the market that is wheat and jowar uh, a person who was consuming jowar now with the increase in the income the demand for jowar will fall because now he will move on to a product with a superior not you can't say about the quality but yeah now he can now afford wheat which he was not able to afford before so a moving from jowar to wheat with the increase in income will decrease the demand for jowar now given goods are the special kinds of inferior goods these are the goods where with the increase in the price of the good the demand for the good will increase now we will move on to the law of demand now what is law of demand the law of demand states that other things being the same if the price of the commodity increases the demand for that commodity contracts and with the fall in the price of the commodity the demand for the commodity 
expand. In other words, we can say price and demand are inversely related to each other. Now, what are these other things? These other things being the same refer to the assumptions of demand. It has been assumed that there is no change in the price of the related goods and the no change in the price, the in, uh, no change in the income of the consumer and no change in the tastes and the preferences of the consumer. So, this completes 